Hello and welcome to Lost in Translation, uh, where we look at things through the trans prism. Um, tonight I'm joined by Isabella and Simona. Welcome. Thank you kindly. Um, so tonight I thought we could have a bit of a chat about possibly more of a serious topic, but not necessarily um, about misgendering. Um, so for those that don't know, so that's basically when someone calls you the opposite pronoun to what, what you would prefer yeah, and identify dude, with. Hey, dude, dude, and you're like, dude. I'm not dude, you know. Yeah, or when I get mammed. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it's like someone sent me an email the other day going, like, they were coming to film at my house, and they were like, dude, when can we come around and film at your house? And I just re re repli re re replied back to them, dude, I'm a chick. And I just thought, well, hmm. that, that's, that was the best way to respond to a dude, bro, it was Oops. to call myself a chick. And he'd go like, oh, well, um. so, you know, anyway. That was one way, even though Cheek's probo. I always wanted to get a little badge, like particularly after I came to Australia, that said, actually, not your mate. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone's your mate, it's, you know. Mateship, yeah. mateship, it's, it's, it's just it's genderless a... style. Exactly. Oh, come on, you know. No, I, yes, yes. yes. Mate! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I, I've found that um, I, I had a weird experience where I went for about like a year, I think, without getting misgendered and then have suddenly started to again. But I think the thing that I'm most offended by is, was that recently I was called ma'am and I'm like, I'm not old enough to be ma'am. Oh. <laughs> like, it was purely a... You're showing your age now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, no, so now I'm misgendered and now I'm thinking I'm old. Well, there's nothing wrong with middle-aged, darling. <laughs> Not that I'm going to mention how old I am, but you know, so I can take, take, yeah, anyway, stop talking. Um, what are we talking about? Misgendering. Yeah. yeah, no, no, we're not talking about age. Um, mm, um, misgendering. Well, I, you know, I just got fiercely misgendered by, um, yeah, by, by, by somebody actually, um, which was, uh, you know, pretty, pretty awful, you know, and, and I've, you know, getting misgendered at Centrelink and getting misgendered by, mis misgendered by, you know, government agencies and, um, you know, things like legal services as well. It's kind of like, oh, you know. Um, particularly, I, I think one of the hardest things for me is that I do come from a separated family and my, um, uh, you know, I, I, I do hope that my family do reinforce my gender pronouns when they are talking about me. So there's not really much control I have over how I am spoken about. Um, so, you know, sometimes, particularly by my family, I am, um, you know, misgendered. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of, it does help when your family can collectively gender you correctly, hmm. because no matter what age, um, you know, your, your family members are, they can have that reinforced to them. Um, yeah. Hmm. So yeah, I've, I've found that with, um, so with my family and, and they're all pretty good, like they all try and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but the thing that I've been quite grateful of the fact was um, I got two nephews and so my brother is very, very much like I'm their uncle and so he says that they, they were quite small when I came out so only one of them was alive so I don't think they ever knew me as an auntie but the fact that they're actually yeah. doing that, like they're quite proactive in trying which kind of sometimes makes a difference. Yeah, like some of, I guess some are better than others, you know, when mm. it's like, so, so, I mean, I, you know, um, I'm, con you know, I'm considered an auntie, you know, yeah. by, by my brother's two, two children, which is good, but neither of them can talk. In fact, one of them hasn't even been born yet, so I'm really <laughs> totally just getting ahead of, I'm counting my chickens before yeah. they've literally hatched, but, um, you know, um, my, you know, my, my son, you know, sort of, you know, I, I'm, part of raising him is um, teaching him about pronouns because, you know, my friends are um, gender diverse and trans and um, uh, um, it's important that he understands that there is fluidity of gender and that there is, you know, she, they um, and, and he. And um, that's something that I'm trying to impart to him as a as a um, sort of, you know, life, you know, piece of education. So, 
And then how that's received by the rest of my family is like, whoa, this is some crazy politics you're feeling, you know, you know, your boy with. And I'm like, well, hang on a minute. There's nothing crazy about it. It's actually quite futurist, you know. Mm. So if you're misgendering me, I think I'm more worried about your crazy politics than my crazy politics. Mm. Um, so, you know, mis misgendering is everyday transphobia as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Um, um, and it's... But to, so to say it's everyday transphobia doesn't mean that it's like, you know, everyone that misgenders is evil. Some people just do it out of, out, you know, out of habit or it's a very difficult thing to pick up. But there's some people who just genuinely just do not give a shit. Yeah. And you'll point it out to them and they just go, I'll get over it, you know, like, you know, I'm not used to it yet. And it's like, well, it's been two years, you know. Mm. I live my day every day, you know. It was interesting what you were saying before about um, sort of being misgendered, uh, like government and organisational kind of misgendered thing, as well as sort of on day-to-day -day people speaking. Because um, recently I had my pap smear, and so I got the results sent in the mail to Miss Nathaniel. And it was kind of like this, like, because you can see them at the, you know, the pathology place where they've got evidence that, you know, it's female anatomy and all that sort of stuff. And it was kind of this, like, it was just this really, I found it quite amusing because it was like, well, clearly they've seen that, like, and it said M on the thing, um, but they just must not have some form of policy to actually be able to change the gender. <laughs> they haven't got a box. I don't know. It's just ticky boxes. Dear idea. Mm. I think in the census, like, I think last year's census, there was, what, Five five men gave birth last year. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was listening to um, Joy, and they were just pulling out some stats, and there were five men that gave birth. So um, at least the Australian census has got a box that can be ticked for, yeah. <laughs> for but I mean, men on that the... can give birth. So yeah. obviously trans men that are giving birth, you know. So mm. they'll get onto it with their pap smears at some point. <laughs> I know. It's amusing, if nothing else. I think it's one of those things that you have to laugh. You have to laugh. You do have to laugh a fair bit. Otherwise, you end up, you know, on an assault charge. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and assault charges are bad in general. No, yeah. Yeah, no, I'd rather <laughs> laugh at misgendering than, than being locked up by the popo. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming on and having a chat <laughs> about that. You've been watching Lost in Translation.